Sing us the songs of Bonnie Scotland. Any old song will do. Hello, this is Kerry from Drunk on Wonderlust. Now it's time to hit yet another long distance hiking trail. And this time we're tackling the East Highland Way. So in this video, we're gonna show you basically the logistics of the trail, all the best wild camping spots as we go along, uh, water sources, where you can resupply, and so much more. So let's find out a little bit about the trail. The East Highland Way is an unofficial 82 mile long hiking trail, starting in Fort William and finishing in Aviemore. The route was devised by Kevin Langan in 2007 to connect the West Highland Way to the Speyside Way. And this episode is going to be super duper exciting because we're using the new version of the Hiker app. It's got loads of new features and we can't wait to show you. Also, we've managed to shave a couple of kilograms off our pack weight, even though it does not look like it whatsoever because we've invested in some new hiking gear. So we've got some new toys to show you as well. Come on then. The Hiker app breaks down the route into handy day sections called stages. Stage one starts by the train station in Fort William. We started filming when we reached the turn off at the roundabout on North Road. If you want to avoid the crowds in Fort William, but pick up some last minute supplies, there's an Audi and Mountain Warehouse right next to the turn off. We were stocked up and ready to go. And just like that, the adventure began. As you can see, it's typical Scottish weather today. It's really gray and it looks like it's gonna chuck it down with rain at any moment. But the weather does say that it should only last for a day or two and then it will be quite sunny. So hopefully we'll get some better weather later on in the trail. Spoiler alert, we got sunburnt. Make sure you pack sun cream. It was the one thing we forgot. Come on. The first few miles after the roundabout were really pretty actually. It was such a great feeling being back in Scotland and back out on a trail again. It felt so different from the last trail we had tackled out in Corfu in 30 degree heat. Here the air was fresh, the trees and plants were familiar and everything was just so green. We were in our element. We've got all the gear on, the first drops of rain are coming. We're about four miles into the trail. And for those of you that like to travel extra light, there's a little stream here, which is the perfect place to fill up your water bottles just before you hit the railway. Fun fact, it's called Broomstick Blue and it's part of the Witch Trail. Now that was a lesson learned from past trails, carrying an excessive amount of water needlessly. We had already checked on the app and today we passed quite a few water sources, so we're traveling a little bit lighter. Come on. <laughs> shimmy, shimmy. <laughs> My happy dance was rudely interrupted by Danny, panicking about getting her boots dirty in the mud. They're hiking boots, they're supposed to get dirty. But miraculously, she managed it without a spot of mud. We're about seven miles into the trail right now and we've just had a quick sweet break, having some Malwams. And we know that some people can't get to the trail until later in the day if you're not local to Scotland. So we've been keeping an eye out for wild camping spots in case you need to camp a little bit earlier than seven miles. Unfortunately, we can't really find any because it's quite overgrown and there's a lot of marshland. We did find one if you're really desperate. So we'll pop the photo of the map on the screen for you. But yeah, we've got about three miles left to where we're hoping to wild camp. So we'll show you where it is. That's happened to us quite a few times, not arriving till late afternoon or even early evening due to train delays and only being able to squeeze in a few miles before having to find a camping spot. I had already planned our spot for tonight, 10.5 miles in, a woodland camp, just after the climb up from the railway line. Ta-da! 
our first night in our brand new tent, the Big Agnes Copper Spur. And I'd picked up Danny a Thermarest Neo Air Light sleeping pad, just secondhand cheap off eBay, as she only had a roll mat last time. Yes, I am a fashion guru in socks and sliders, complemented by a midge net. What an icon. Sorry we weren't able to film much of the last section on this trail. It was hammering it down with rain. But finally, we managed to get the tent up roughly where we thought we were going to camp. And Dizzy will show you more about that later. But it's really cool. Look at how many pockets it has. It's so lovely. And we've just had our dinner. We had couscous and some weird veggie things. And it was great. <laughs> Good morning! We're just packing down the tent now. We had a lovely night's sleep. We must have had about nine hours. It makes such a difference having a blow up mat rather than this thin little thing I had last time. So we're just tidying away, making sure we leave nothing behind. We've got about a mile into Speen Bridge when we're gonna get coffee. Can't wait. Just a reminder to leave no trace when you're out and about and try not to fall over the tree root, Danny. And we're going to go slightly back on ourselves into town because it's a bit quicker and then we're going to resupply and get a hot drink. Speen Bridge is not actually on the trail but I promised Danny she could get a proper coffee and it wasn't going to add on too much time. We were so pleased with the new tent, so much space and so much lighter than the other one. I think I'd still take the Salewa Light Trek 2 for winter trails or bad weather. It's built like a tank. I'm not sure how this new one would hold up in a storm. Good morning, everybody. So we made it to Speen Bridge and we're sat here in the Bridge Cafe early in the morning having a kneaded hot chocolate with marshmallows and cream. And this is glorious. The sun has got his hat on. Hip, 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 hooray. The sun has got his hat on and he's coming out to play. Hey. <laughs> and everybody in the cafe is watching me do this. <laughs> Good singing, <Hooray>. baby. <laughs> She's got the snacks. Snacks. <laughs> snacks. <laughs> Woo. So here we are, we're at the start of stage two. This whole section is only 9.3 miles long and we're camping right at the end of it. So it's not too far to go today. We're in high spirits, although we have just resupplied at the spa. So our bags are nice and heavy because the next resupply stop isn't until Lagan. So we've made sure we've got everything we need, all the food and water. So we're in high spirits as fingers crossed, it's not raining and we're gonna get going going now. More pretty scenery as we started stage two. Even if we had to walk on tarmac for a while, the views kept us distracted. Well, we've come down a tiny little footpath just off the trail where the trail heads down towards the River Speen. And as you can see, it's glorious. If we've got any wild swimming enthusiasts out there that watch this, or anybody that likes to pitch up on a kind of like beachy area right next to the river, this would be a perfect spot. It was pretty, but this was nothing in comparison to what we found later on the East Highland Way. Well, we're just going to take one quick minute to apologise to you guys. I know we haven't been uploading as often as we usually do, but there's been a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, we've been in Corfu for the past three months, earning some money, living the Mamma Mia dream, singing some ABBA, <laughs> and that meant we could afford all of our new hiking gear. Sure, <laughs> and also, we've been busy bunnies and setting up a new business. Please, if you can just take a little second, go and check it out. It's called Officially Smashed It. Com. It's sustainable hiking souvenirs, collectible little metal magnets, just like the one here. We'll show you a little close up. Do, 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 do. They're really cute. They are really cute. And we're collecting the, we've even got ones for the East Highland Way. But yes, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook as well. Check it out. 
By this point, we were starving, so it was time for a quick lunch stop. I mean, what idiot packs a heavy avocado for a hiking trail? This one, that's who. Got to try and get in my five a day. Another place you can refill your bottles is just outside Inch Farm. There's another water supply here. Halfway through stage two, and we spotted our first East Highland Way marker. Oh, I've got a brand new combine harvester and I'll give you the key. Now, trail markers on this route were pretty sporadic. There's a few stages where you came across them quite often, but for most of it, they're hardly seen. So we highly recommend using the GPS map route. The new Hiker app now has an OS map layer option, and it's so easy just to flick between them and decide which layer works best for you. Purple baby. <laughs> Big shout out to Charlotte for getting me my new filter for my birthday. It's um, much easier to use than the Sawyer Mini. I also want to quickly do a shout out for the legend that is Dave Outdoors for helping me out with my business launch. If you haven't watched his channel yet, make sure you check it out. He is such a fun guy. I'll put a link in the video description. So we're finally off the tarmac and onto a really pretty section by the river, which is nice relief on the feet. And there's also some nice flat areas down there if anybody's interested in a camp at this stage. Um, we're a bit shattered already and we've got a big bastard of a hill coming up, bit of a climb up through some woodland. Uh, Danny has got her hiking pole at the ready. I'm ready. 14 99 a pair from Aldi's, bargain hunters. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've had some snacks. Snacks. Replenished our energies. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's tackle it. You just missed Dizzy stacking it down there, but she was holding the camera, so unfortunately you can't see it. <laughs> Luckily for me, I wasn't being filmed at that point, but I did have a bruised bum. We've got to our first river crossing. Now just make sure on the last half a mile before the river crossing, use your GPS because it can get really confusing. That one was solid. The big white one is wobbly, so use the one to the right of you. Now this climb wasn't exactly steep, but it did go on for quite a while and we were out of practice. Okay, just want to do another shout out right now to Brennan Vic, aka Mum and Dad, for finding these hiking poles in Aldi's and having the sense to get them for us. Because we don't normally take hiking poles, but coming up this hill when we're absolutely shattered, at the very end of the day we've actually got them out and we've used them and we use them on the river crossings and they've actually been a godsend so thank you very much so we're on our way down this big hill because we've missed our turning i was singing <laughs> extraordinarily well <laughs> Not to Danny, a little made up song to um, motivate us to get up the hill. Turns out we didn't even need to go up this hill. Uh. <laughs> I was too distracted having a lovely time. So we're now going all the way back down the hill to try and find the path again. Luckily, I checked the map <laughs> at the right time because if we'd gone up any further, I don't really know what we would have done. So there you are. We've reached the village of Inverlair, which means we're right at the very end of stage two. And then we're gonna head down that way onto stage three for about 10, 15 minutes and find somewhere to pitch up. We started walking along the road at the start of stage three and just across the stream to the left, we found a lovely little pitch for the night. 
The new tent was easy enough to assemble, although it was weird having to pitch the inner and fly separately, when my other tent pitched all together in one go. One thing I love though is the colour. A nice olive green blends in better than white and a luminous yellow. After tea, we washed up in the stream using our eco-friendly soap. Someone had messaged asking me what we use. I'll leave the details in the video description. The sun was setting and it was time to relax. I'm in the tent. <laughs> it is the end of day two and we're pitched up in a really, really beautiful spot. We'll show you. Absolutely shattered. <laughs> Getting used to these bags again. Danny, I don't know what she's doing. She's <laughs> battling around. What, what are you doing? I'm falling off. Here she is. I'm falling off the bed. Here we Good are. Good morning, everyone. We had another lovely night's sleep just by this little stream. We'll show you where it is on the map. It wasn't quite as quiet because we had some nosy visitors. The sheep were having a little poke around in the night, but it was fine. So we're all packed up and ready to go, leaving no trace. And we're going to crack on with stage three. We left the stream and headed towards the lake. The sun is out. The layers are coming off. The hair is going up. The hair is going up. It is a gorgeous sunny day today. How exciting. Woo -woo. The brilliant sunshine made the view across the lake even more stunning. It was around this time we realised we had no sun cream and wouldn't be passing a shop for another 35 miles or so. Oh dear. Hopefully we'll get some shade at some point. Okay, we're following the route um, which is telling us to do on the GPS down by the railway. And it feels like we've just gone through someone's garden. And um, now we're in like dense undergrowth, but we're gonna trust and keep going. Famous last words, thick bog, no path at all. We were scrambling through spider webs, water and thick branches. And to top it off, the gate we needed to go through was locked. <laughs> Okay. A bit further down from the gate, there was a very broken ladder. We thought we'd try that. You're right. <laughs> All the rungs had fallen off from rot. We're following the exact path. I think this was once a bridge that's now covered in Christmas trees. Realising something didn't seem quite right, we checked the map again and saw there was actually an alternative route we could have taken to this. But as we were almost through it, we just ploughed on. Okay, so we're just at the point where the diversion path meets the original path. And to be honest, we would suggest that you take the diversion because the original route looks like it hasn't been walked in about 10 centuries it's really overgrown we had to go through someone's land to get to it and it's very boggy and marshy and it was quite an ordeal if i'm honest and to be honest there's so much beautiful scenery on this trail you don't really miss much if you don't go through there anyway so yeah take the longer route go the diversion now on the hiker app it gives you a few alternative diversions at certain stages on the route but i'll explain that in more detail when we get to them Okay, we're taking a little pit stop. We've just had lunch, had a lovely little sandwich. We're on the long forestry section at the beginning of stage three. And um, we've got another kind of five miles on the same path. Um, but the sun is out and we don't really mind it. Um, the scenery is gorgeous. And yeah, we're just gonna uh, make up some time and get cracking. We couldn't believe our luck with the weather. There was a nice cool breeze, so we weren't completely melting. The path was a bit monotonous, but after the bog and the spider webs this morning, we enjoyed cruising along for a few hours, not having to use the map or get our feet wet. We needed to top up our water, so had a quick look to see where the next water supply was coming up.
looks a bit like we. It looked like wee. Luckily, it didn't taste like it. Looking out into the mountains, I was a little bit disappointed we wouldn't be taking in any high peaks on this trail. Danny, on the other hand, was ecstatic, as she wasn't a fan of steep elevation at all. But despite the low elevation, this would still end up being one of my favourite trails to date. We were just getting started. Apologies in advance for the wind noise on this next shot. We finally made it out of the forestry section, which is a bit of a mouthful. It's taken us most of the afternoon to get down, um, but here we are by this beautiful, beautiful river, and we're only about a mile and a half now from the lock, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to find a nice little wild camping spot just by the lock tonight. Look at that view. Now we were gonna originally plan to camp on the beach, but it was a little bit exposed. It's a bit windy today. And also there was just so many bugs down there, so many midges and stuff. So we found a little bit um, of an area just up from the lock. Um, it's really sheltered and you've still got this absolutely gorgeous view. So we're happy. There's a path leading off from the main trail to the left, just before the one that leads down to the beach. If you head down there, you'll find a completely flat piece of grass area. Lovely jubbly. Now, despite the hot sun we had today, the wind chill by the lock was making us really cold. I was grateful for my down sleeping bag I'd picked up on eBay recently. Another bargain with a comfort rating of minus one. A massive thanks to Kevin Piggott for sending us some sleeping booties, although Danny claimed these for her own. Good morning party people! Okay, this is day four on the East Highland Way. Now we haven't filmed uh, too much this morning because it was a midge fest. As soon as we woke up they were just swarming and we just needed to pack down nice and quick and uh, get out of there. But we did head down to the beach and I took through a um, few drone shots which are very pretty. Um, we've literally come five minutes up the road and just in case you're looking for a quick water source before you head on your way, this one is actually much better to get water from than the one on the beach. So just hold out for a few minutes, come up here and it's much easier to get down to the water. Cool, let's go. I had a quick play with the drone and then we started making our way up alongside Loch Lagan to finish off stage three. We noticed a few potential camp spots along the way, some nice beach and grassy areas. I wondered if I could ask you all a quick favour. I'm constantly trying to improve these trail videos and wondered if I could get some feedback from you all in the comments, please. Is there anything else I could include in these videos that you might find useful? What do you like and not like about them? Any suggestions would be really appreciated. Now this was another long section on the same path, but just after we had lunch, we did come to the end of it. Well, here we are we have just finished stage three now on the long road that we've just been going up by the lock there is a turn off to the right and that is where you go to start stage four and it's quite an ascent um, up you have to go a bit of a climb it's quite hot now so we are going to remove some layers now stage three was quite a long one it was at uh, 14 miles and um, we did split it up for a specific reason which we'll tell you about very, very shortly, so don't switch off. But for now, let's tackle this climb.
climbing up the hill. It's not too bad actually. Uh, we thought it was going to be a lot worse than what it is. <laughs> there she is. Look at the little baby. Look at the state of my hair. This is what three nights wild camping does for me. Cooey. It was nice changing up the path a bit and the climb up wasn't bad at all to be fair. Okay, we're still on stage four and we're coming up towards the very end of the lock, Lock Lagan. Now the path, the East Island Way Trail continues up that way, but we're actually gonna take this little path down here because we're hoping to camp near the little beach at the end of this lock. We're just breaking it up. The day is beautiful. We're going to do some sunbathing. We've got plenty of time. So hopefully we'll get down there okay and we'll find a place to camp. But come on, let's go. We'll see what we can find. It was a straightforward walk down to the beach, only 10 minutes or so from the trail. So here we are on the very far end of uh, Lag and Lock and we found the most ideal little pitch for our tent. I'll show you now. Yes, the unicorn of camping spots. Just beautiful. The perfect mix of beach and woodland and a view to die for. We settled in for the night knowing we were halfway through our East Highland Way adventure. And I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this episode. So press that subscribe button and make sure you tune in for next week's. Let's take a sneak little look of what we've got in store. Good morning. Okay, as you can see, we are stood here in glorious Jurassic Park. It looks like there's a lot of fallen trees, so we're being sent on a diversion. No idea where we're going. I'd like to take a brief moment to talk about the many <laughs> hiking hairstyles of Miss. Danielle de Salas Cross. It's too hot. This one I like to call the genie. I'm in the cocoon. <laughs> I'm hoping I emerge as a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> Don't go up there, that's the wrong way.